What's going on guys? Welcome to the Ask Phoebe's YouTube channel, the information source on all things zero chain. My name is Derek Fiebiger. I launched a cryptocurrency hedge fund in 2018 called Arturo Capital, and I currently sit as director of operations for zero chain. Zero chain is an ambitious blockchain project focusing on decentralizing data storage and tokenizing the value of that storage through a crypto asset called ZCN. On this week's episode of the Zero Chain Minute, we have some solid questions to go over on Amazon S3 specifics on technical questions. And I go into a little detail at the end of the video on how the crypto space operates behind the scenes. For question one, is S3 still a feature? It wasn't on the roadmap. Also, what's the status of CDN? Is that still a planned feature? So S3 is integrated. We'll announce this shortly after some more testing. As for CDN, which is generally a use case for entrepreneurs um, so they can leverage our platform. It's not currently part of our, our offering right now. We're, we're really focused on just getting BetaNet and Mainnet out the door. Uh, but, but later down the line, that's possible. For question two, a bit technical, but how will enterprises connect to the private chain? For example, private connection via gateway endpoint. Sensible yapper. On the high level for how enterprises will integrate into zero chain, they'll navigate through Oracle Marketplace, which, which will guide their integration. More specifically, they'll run a private chain exactly like mainnet, but they'll have a login, et cetera. The deployment is click and deploy. It's all automated, and we'll announce this shortly, and you can try it out. Question three. Amazon S3 charges per feature for storage, retrieving data per gigabyte, transfer acceleration, upload speed. Can MSBs have similar tiers once features exist? Yes. Uh, at Mainnet and also Betanet, since Beta will showcase all of the features that you'll see on Mainnet 1.0, uh, on, uh, on, these, on, these, on both Beta and Mainnet, you can deploy multiple blobbers with different price structures and challenge completion times. For more clarity on this, you can refer to the storage document or you can ping us on, on Telegram. Question four. Lastly, this is again from Sensible Yapper. Say I uploaded a file and later I made updates to my file and then I upload again. Do I have two versions now or do I have an overwrite? Uh, by the way, thank you, Sensible Yabber, for the questions. It's always appreciated. The more, the better. So uh, really quick answer to this. We, we have not introduced versions yet, so an update to a file is an overwrite. Question five. If we, uh, if we can still get the white glove miner sharder blobber option, as some members of the community have, or can they still get the minor sharder blobber option as some members of the community have? If yes, what's the price? I would really like to take the opportunity if these still are available. Um, thank you. Boho SR. Um, thanks for the question. For context, um, uh, what he's referring to, last year we released a minor sharder blobber brochure highlighting the key components needed to run a rig on the platform. Um, it, it, so on the zero chain network, you can run a miner, sharder, blobber, or all of the above. And we can give you a list of everything you need in order to do so. Or um, at the time we were offering to build and deploy the rig for you. In the latter scenario, all you'd need to do is, is pay the cost without having to do much else. We call this a, we call this a, a white glove service. Uh, the answer to whether or not we still offer that service is it, it's the, the white glove is pending. So our, our, our bandwidth right now is it's completely focused on getting you guys a mainnet. 
uh, and, and thus our focus is on on development. So, but but Suswata says y- you can contact Kingstar and and they'll build and ship directly to you. It's basically what they they are a manufacturer that that does this. Um, so it, it's 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 just another option that that will get you the same objective. Um, it's just through a different avenue. So it, it, and we can help you with this. Um, and then you just find a data center near your location, such as the Hurricane Electric that Siswata recommends, uh, which is cheap. Um, then you just turn it, turn it on and deploy our code and run it. So there's 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 comprehensive there's there's comprehensive information for components on the rigs. If if you want to really know like how, how to just build your own, um, there's all that information. Um, all the components for each the, each of the rigs, miner, charter, b- a blobber, all the above, in the econ paper located on zerochain.net. So um, check that out if you just want to build your own. And um, we're always we're always able to give recommendations and Telegram for any in, any specific questions too. So just reach out to Chad or, or, or one of us. Question six. Why did Zero Chain not announce AWS, Oracle, CoreSight, ETH integration on sites like CoinDesk, Cointelegraph, ICO Drops, um, et cetera? It helps raise awareness, Coa Map. So I like this question. Um, it, it, it can go down an in- interesting direction. And in, in 2018, I was, I was managing seven figures worth of crypto investments. And it, it, it lent a lot of new insights into the space uh, that I didn't have previously. And I'm going to close this episode out with a tangent on one of those insights. But before doing so, I'm going to give a quick answer to this question. It, it's it's not that easy to get articles um, uh, uh, released on on platforms like CoinDesk and Cointelegraph without paying a lot of money or or knowing the right people. Now, um, th- this is the end of the question, so you can stop here. Or for those who want to stick around for kind of a more in depth a- explanation here, you can continue on. So uh, for, for anyone unaware, websites like, like Coindesk and Cointelegraph are a couple of the most prominent news sources for crypto. Getting articles released on these platforms are, without question, one of the best ways for a blockchain project to gain exposure to a crypto-centric audience. In order to know why certain products, projects get articles on these sites and some don't, you have to understand how, how, how projects get on them in the first place. So there's, there's an interesting investment web in crypto that, that most are unaware of. So I'll, I'll try to explain it quickly and simply when you think of some of the, the, the richest people and companies in crypto. And, and, and if you were to try to think of some of the richest people and companies in crypto, you know, who, do you, who would you think of? You're, you're probably going to think of Binance, CZ, Coinbase, Draper, uh, Winklevoss, Lubin, uh, Novogratz, et cetera. These are the biggest players, and ironically, most of them all have their own centralized internal investment bubble, um, meaning the, like, the biggest money in crypto in, in, invests collectively in a lot of the same projects. This is great for projects that need to get selected into this blub, into this little investment bubble because it means that y- you get the full platter of everything you need. Project funding, listings on all the top exchanges like Coinbase, access to their entire network for collaboration across various projects, and tying it back to the original question, uh, great exposure on all the top PR platforms, both within the worlds of crypto and and broader finance. So let's kind of look into this a little bit further. Uh, let's let's start with let's start with Mark Andreessen, uh, one of the most brilliant tech investors ever. Um, he started out with Netscape in the '90s and climbed his way up further with successful positions in Facebook, eBay, and others. 
Now, now Mark got involved in Bitcoin in the early days and obviously landed another slam dunk investment with that. In 2018, his fund, <coughs> excuse me, his fund, A16Z, uh, launched a massive $300 million crypto fund and they just, they just launched another one. I think it's around 500 million. So money's just pouring in right now. Um, not just from them, but, but from a lot of different funds. Um, anyways, so, uh, um, you know, now why, like now, why am I, why am I telling you all of this? Uh, well, because this makes a good example for how everything is interconnected in crypto. Um, now, yeah, like back to this tangled web thing. Um, if you look here in, the, in this image, what you'll see is tons of cr crossover from top crypto funds, um, Polychain, A16Z, Coinbase, Dragonfly. And if you look at all the projects they invest in, like Maker, Filecoin, Definity, et cetera, they're also pretty much overlapping. And if you're wondering why projects like Maker get all of the attention and listings, well, this is why. The web is even more connected than this. This is just like not even scratching the surface. So Coinbase. Coinbase has not only an exchange, but a, f a fund with, within itself. That fund invests in other funds and projects, uh, but... But top funds also have top funds like A16Z and some others we'll talk about in a second. Uh, also have equity in Coinbase, <laughs> so they've received investment from. So Coinbase is, it has received investment from A16Z and a Mark Andreessen's fund, and, uh, Union Square Ventures, uh, Draper. And uh, this is a key one: um, uh, Digital Currency Group. Now, if you don't know Digital Currency Group, you should look into it. Um, yeah, I mean, you probably heard of it, but um, in some way or another. Digital Currency Group is run by a guy you might be familiar with on Twitter, Barry Silbert. Um, yeah, DGC, or Digital Cur Currency Group, also owns Grayscale. Now, Grayscale is a big one. Uh, they are a trust with billions of dollars in crypto under their control. They own nearly 2% of the total Bitcoin supply, or they have it under management. They also own a crap ton of Ether and various other cryptos. You can look it up online. Uh, like that's, it's a ton. Uh, they control by far the most crypto assets and um, Digital Currency Group as a whole has their hands in lots of other funds and projects. And, um, you know, but the key thing is, what else do they own? Um, so that question is Coindesk. Um, Coindesk is is owned by uh, Barry or, or Digital Currency Group. And if you, if you kind of draw all the connections, the top investment funds, the top exchanges, and the top PR are all interconnected. And if you want to go further down the rabbit hole, you'll also see that, that, that there's a lot more interconnection, um, but we don't have to go too long on this. Um, I don't want to, uh, I don't, I don't want to distract too much from this question, but, but it's definitely, it, there's definitely some significant overlap. And this, just a side note, this, this happens with all kinds of different investment, just in the, in the, in all different sectors, but, um, but it's it's a little more significant in the Coinbase or the or the crypto space because this is a supposed to be a decentralized space and if it, there's a lot of centralization going on with with investment and I'm not trying to say there's anything wrong with that I'm just I'm just kind of sp speaking the obvious here um, and there's there's a little more relevance as well um, like if you look here at David Marcus who runs Facebook Libra, used to work with Coinbase. These are two unicorn organizations that A16Z holds board seats on. I don't want to go any further off topic than I already have. I just I, I wanted to share all this information to give a better idea of, of how most of the top value projects you're familiar with are all interconnected and contained within this web. 
Now, that's not to say a project can't become large without them. And it's, they're also very important because they're, they're bringing a lot of money into the space. And, and it, 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 it definitely trickles down everywhere. Um, and, but, but for, for those projects that don't get picked into this exclusive bubble of top investors, you face a much more challenging reality. Uh, not only do you have difficulty getting access to the full platter of benefits they give to their little baby projects, they, it, if you're coming up with competing technology to their, their, their children, you can face a lot of friction getting on exchanges, getting Series A funding and PR on sites like, like Coindesk because they, I mean, they want their investments to do well. It's, it's natural. Um, and I, I don't want it to sound like there's some 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 conspiracy again, because the best tech will prevail, and and smart projects like ours are are taking alternative routes, um, like working with Oracle, alongside Chainlink, building bridges onto Ethereum, and and there's even more to come um, that that I already know of that I'm excited that that'll get revealed eventually, and 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 through all this, you know, we'll prove that we do belong within that bubble. Um, so, so that's, that's kind of, um, I just, I, I just wanted to go on a little note there to, to, to bring some context to like why things are the way they are. Um, but, but yeah, I've been, I've been rambling for too long. <laughs> um, hopefully all that makes sense and maybe bring some new context to things that are in crypto that, that you weren't already aware of. Uh, but and if so, let me know, um, I'll do more like little tidbits like this. Um, but yeah, that's it for today. Thanks guys. And, uh, I'll, I'll see you next week.